Hi sewing friends, welcome to my tutorial. Today we will be sewing the jacket from my latest pattern. It's Nomi ME 2065. This is basically a standard tailored jacket, single breasted with notch lapels, has a breast pocket, welt pockets with flaps, and surgeon cuffs with three buttons. The only difference is, is that my jacket has these really cool cut out details. I hope you learn a lot of tips and cool tricks and everything that you can take with your next project. Enjoy. Okay, at this point, you should have cut out all of your pieces and made any necessary adjustments, transferred all of your markings, and interfaced anything that needs to be interfaced. Right now, we will be working with piece number one. We're going to reinforce the upper small dot and the large dot at the inner corners of the bodice front, and we're going to go ahead and make our dart. When working on the dart on the top, you don't have to go all the way up. You're gonna sew about halfway up and we will finish that one a little later. Okay, now let's work on piece number two, which is the welt. You're gonna go ahead and fold that lengthwise with the right seams together and you're gonna stitch the ends. Go ahead and trim your seams. Turn the welt right side out. Poke out your corners and baste the raw edges together. On the outside, pin the welt to the left bodice front, placing basting line along the lower placement line, matching the small dots. Stitch in place. On the outside, press the welt up, matching the small and large dots. Stitch close to the end of the welt. Now we're going to sew the bodice back. This is pieces number three, which you will be sewing with right sides together at the shoulder seams of the bodice front. And you're going to also sew it at the sides. and stitch together at the center back from the neck edge to the small dot. Now we're gonna work on the under collar. Go ahead and stitch the center back seam of the under collar together matching the notches. If you haven't already, go ahead and make sure that you stay stitched the neckline. Let's go ahead and sew on the under collar. With right sides together, pin the front edge of the under collar to the notched collar edge of the blazer. You're gonna match the small dots, the large dots, and the notches. Stitch notched edge between the small and large dots. Press the seam open, but at this point, don't trim it. Let's stitch the rest of the neck edge. First, we're going to go ahead and bring that dart in, the one that we left halfway done, matching at the seam lines. Go ahead after that and stitch the remaining area. Clip the curves, press the seam open, and press the darts toward the center. Now let's work on the bodice lining. You're gonna go ahead and make your darts and press them towards the center. Now we're going to sew on the front facing. With right sides together, match up the notches and the markings. Then take it to the sewing machine and sew a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. 
To reinforce the upper small and large dots at the inner corners of the upper front facing, stitch along the seam line at one half of an inch seam allowance. Clip to reinforce dots at corners, being careful not to clip through the stitching. Now let's sew the lining back. We're going to sew it the same way that we did on the bodice back. Now we're gonna sew on the upper collar. Make sure that you have stay stitched the neck edge, the same as you did on the bodice. With right sides together, pin the upper corners of the upper collar to the facing. We're gonna sew it just like we did the last time. Next, we're gonna go ahead and pin in place and stitch the center area. Make sure you go in and clip the curves and press the seam open. With right sides together, pin the upper collar to the under collar, matching the center's small and large dots. Take it to the sewing machine and stitch, pivoting at the corners. Trim your seam allowance down. Now we're going to turn the collar in. and poke out those corners. Now you're going to match the seam lines from the under collar and the upper collar together and pin in place. And then you're going to take them to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch right across that already seam line. That's done just to keep everything in place. Look at how neat that looks. Let's go ahead and turn that back inside out. Now we're going to go ahead and pin the lapels. Adjust the ease stitching as you go. After you get everything pinned in place, go ahead and take it to the sewing machine and stitch using a five and an eighth seam allowance. After you're done, trim across the collar and the lapel corners and trim down the seam allowance and press all the seams. Pin the lower edge of the bodice and the lining together between the small dots at the lower dart seam. Stitch between the small dots 
breaking stitching at the center back. And when you're done, trim the seams and the corners. Turn the blazer right side out and then press. Now we're going to work on the lower fronts. You should have already interfaced, clipped your notches, and transferred your markings so that we can begin. You can go ahead and sew your pocket flaps using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and make sure that you clip those curves so that it can turn over smoothly. Since the pockets are slanted, I wanted to make sure I was putting them on the right sides, so I went ahead and just label mine right and left. Go ahead and lay your pattern pieces out the same way I have mine laid out. The flap is going to lay down with the facing side up. That's the uninterfaced side. And we will be working with the back of the pocket lining, which is piece number nine. And just so you know, we are working with the right side lower front. So let's start with the pocket lining. We're going to take the pocket lining and we're going to lay it on top of the welt with the raw edges together, matching the markings. Go ahead and pin that in place. Next, we're going to lay the pocket flap on top of the welt, matching the markings with the raw edges lined up. Now you're going to take both pieces to the sewing machine and baste a one quarter of an inch seam allowance. At this point, you should have already sewn around your welt box and we're going to be working with the pocket lining. You're going to use the basting stitch from where you sew the welt to the pocket to line it up with the bottom line of the welt box. And you're going to pin that in place. Make sure that you're matching up your corner dots. Take that to the sewing machine and sew in place at a one quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now that that's sewn into place, we're going to go ahead and sew on the flap and the welt. We're going to take the flap and we're going to turn it upside down and we're going to use the basing line as a guide. You're going to go ahead and take this to the machine and you're going to stitch this down from dot to dot. Now that the stitching is done, we're going to go ahead and cut through that center line of the welt box. You just want to give it a start and then I like to um, cut through with my buttonhole maker and now I'm going to use my scissors to cut through and we're going to cut up until the point where we're going to make our little triangles and you want to cut into those corners and make sure that you're not cutting through your stitch lines. Working from the outside, you can go ahead now and tuck everything through to the inside. You can see those welts already forming. On the inside with the right sides together, we're going to go ahead and pin the pocket to the lower front. Make sure that you're matching the small dots and the large dots. You're going to stitch between the dots and a one quarter of an inch seam allowance, back stitching to reinforce. Then you're going to sew the raw edges of the pocket to the pocket lining. Now you're going to stitch down your welt and make sure that you catch that clipped corner.
Do the same thing on the other side. Now your welt pockets are done. Okay, now let's work on the lower backs. As you see, I have gone ahead and interfaced the hems and the vent extensions. And let's go ahead and work on those darts. After you make your darts on the lower back, press them towards the center. Now we're going to stitch the lower back at the center back. Pin the center back seam from the upper edge to the large dot. You're going to take this to the sewing machine and you're going to back stitch at the dot to reinforce that seam. Clip to the stitching at the large dot, being careful not to cut through the stitch lines. And press your seam open. Stitch the lower front to the lower back at the side seams. Now let's work on the lower front facing and the lining. You're going to make your darts and press them towards the center. Next, you're going to stitch the lower front facing to the lower front lining piece. Now you're going to make the darts in the lower right back lining and the lower left back lining. And when you make the darts, you're going to press them towards the center. You're also going to reinforce the inner corners of the back vents. Clip to the stitching at the dots, being careful not to clip through the stitching lines. With the right sides together, pin the lower back lining sections together. Make sure that you match the large dots. And you're going to stitch from the upper edge to large dot and then back stitch at the dot to reinforce the seam. Stitch the lower front lining to lower back lining at the side edges. With right sides together, pin the lower front facing to the lower front, matching the notches. Stitch front and lower edge. Stitch upper edge between the small dots at the dart seams. With right sides together, pin the back vent edges of right back lining and right blazer back, matching the small dots and the large dots. Starting at large dot, stitch right back vent edges together at two inches above the lower edge of the lining. Be careful not to catch the left half of the blazer in the line. With right sides together, pin the back vent edges of the left back lining and the left blazer back, matching the small and the large dots. Starting at the large dot, stitch left back vent edges together. Turn everything right side out. Push all of the upper edge pieces through to the inside and secure with a pin. Reach inside and turn everything back to the inside. Making sure that everything is neat and lined up, take to the sewing machine and sew a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now let's sew the top to the bottom. With right sides together and raw edges even, pin lower edges of the bodice front to the upper edge of lower front, matching the small dots and the notches. Stitch from front edge to small dot at dart seam, leaving an opening between the inner small dots, back stitching to reinforce the seams. Trim down your seam allowance. 
When sewing on the left side, you can go ahead and close up that opening because you won't need it on that side. This is just for the buttonhole. Turn everything back to the right side. Using needle and thread, slip stitch the openings and the lining closed. Now let's work on the sleeves. As you see, both sleeves have been interfaced already. And we're going to start with the upper sleeve, which is the big piece. I've gone ahead and added my ease stitching to the back edge of the upper sleeve between the notches. We're going to go ahead and pin the under sleeve to the upper sleeve with right sides together. And we're going to stitch with a 5 8 of an inch seam. Press your seam allowance open flat. Now you're going to reinforce the large dots on the upper sleeve extension and the under sleeve extension. And when you're done, go ahead and clip your inner corners. With the right sides together, fold lower corner of upper sleeve, matching the small dots. And you're going to stitch this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance from the fold to the small dot, back stitching at the dot to reinforce the seam. And then you're going to press that seam open. Turn to the outside and poke out your corners and give it a good press. With right sides Matching together, large dots, pin the upper sleeve pulling up to the under sleeve to at the back edge. Press the seam open flat. Ease stitch the upper edge of the sleeve between the notches. Okay, now let's work on the sleeve lining. The sleeve lining is sewn a little bit different than the actual sleeve. First, with right sides together, you are going to sew the upper sleeve to the under sleeve and also have your ease stitching in there just like you did on the sleeve. You're going to match all of the notches. Take it to the sewing machine and stitch with the 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. You're going to reinforce the inner small dot at the extension on the upper sleeve lining and also on the under sleeve lining. You're going to clip the corners of both, making sure not to clip through the stitching line. With right sides together, pin the upper sleeve to the under sleeve at the back edge, matching the large dots. Stitch from the armhole edge to the large dot, back stitching at the dot to reinforce the seam. Press your seams open flat. For a point of reference, we're working with the right sleeve. We're going to go ahead and attach the lining to the sleeve vent first. First, we're going to match the lining under sleeve extension to the under sleeve extension of the sleeve. Stitch using a one quarter of an inch seam allowance. Next, you're going to swing the lower edge around and pin in place, matching the seams. 
and stitch with a one quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now you're going to swing the remaining extension edge around and pin it to the other edge matching at the large dots. Stitch using a one quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now let's turn everything to the right side. Just take a look at it to make sure everything is sewn correctly. Turn the whole thing inside out. Now you want to tuck in the remaining extension edges. Make sure everything is all nice and neat. While holding the extension edges together, turn it back to the inside. Pin the extension edges together and you're going to take to the sewing machine and stitch a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way across through all of the thickness. Fold the lining edge extension across the jacket sleeve edge extension. Pin it in place and you're going to take it to the sewing machine and stitch another 5 8 of an inch seam allowance across all of the thicknesses. Go ahead and take it to your pressing station and give it a good press. And now the vents are all finished. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and sew on my buttons. Um, some people like to use uh, buttonholes because they like the way they look and the aesthetic. Um, if you want that, that's optional, but not necessary for me. So I'm just going to sew my buttons on. Okay, so the buttons are all completed. And let's go ahead and set the sleeve. And just for point of reference, we are working with the right sleeve. Inside of the jacket, you're going to take the lining and move it out of the way. And inside the sleeve, you're going to tuck in the lining piece because we are only working with the outer fabrics. On both the sleeve and the jacket, you're going to find your underarm marking and you're going to match at that point. Pin all the way around the sleeve while easing it in at the same time. Then take it to the sewing machine and stitch using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. At this point, I went ahead and added in my shoulder pad. A shoulder pad is optional and you don't have to add one in if you don't want to, but this is the point that you would do it. Let's turn this sleeve to the inside so that we can go ahead and stitch up the lining. Adjust the ease stitching and match all of your markings and notches and pin everything in place. Now that the jacket is finished, you can give it a good press and make sure you sew on your button.